This is the economics department presentation. My name is Adina Ardalin and I've been teaching at LCU since 2008. I've been teaching uh, classes in microeconomics, international economics, international trade and data analytics, um, both at undergraduate as well as graduate level. I've served as an advisor for economics students and my research is focused on empirical investigation in international trade. Before joining SEU, I got my PhD and Master in Economics from Purdue University. In my spare time, I love reading, uh, traveling, skiing in winter time, and in general spending time with my family. I have here with me uh, two economics students, Olivia and Andy. I'm going to turn it over to them to introduce themselves. Thank you so much, Professor Ardeline. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Andy Meager, and I'm a senior economics major from Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, just to discuss a little bit of how I ended up at Santa Clara, um, I, when I was looking at where I was going to spend my undergraduate career, location was really important to me. I knew that I wanted to go out of state, get a change of scenery, um, and Santa Clara is a great option for that. It's just, just a stone's throw away from the San Jose airport, so it was uh, super easy to get home uh, when I needed to. They've got connections all across the country and the world. Um, another thing that was really important to me uh, was being in a major metropolitan region with a diverse set of cultural and professional opportunities. And again, Santa Clara really fit this mold. San Francisco is just, uh, just up the road and we're in the heart of Silicon Valley. So it's a great location. Um, and of course, being about an hour away from Santa Cruz and the beaches there, as well as four hours from Tahoe is a, a great plus. Uh, now I'll hand it over to Olivia. Thanks, Sandy. Yeah, so I'm Olivia and I'm also an economics major in the Levy School of Business um, and I have an art history minor as well. And I'm from Portland, Oregon. Um, so I also love hiking and biking and sort of spending time outdoors. Um, and then thinking uh, sort of similar to Andy, why I ended up choosing Santa Clara out of sort of the options for, uh, for college. I think for me, um, it's the sense of community and the people. Um, even just when, when I was visiting campus as a prospective student, I had a very strong sense of the, the connection and the compassion and the care that, that Santa Clara students have for each other and that professors have, that the entire, the entire community, it's professors, staff, students, everybody is looking out for each other. Um, and I know that I, I, I knew that that connection and community was was really sort of my my top priority for choosing a school and Santa Clara totally fit the bill on that and, and was was pretty clearly the, the choice that I wanted to uh, that I ended up making um, and for after college my my plans um, I will actually be heading up to Seattle Washington um, and pursuing a career at uh, Bain and Company which is a, a strategic management consulting firm. Thank you. We were lucky to have you in our, in our econ department. So in this present, I'm going to go over a few slides um, and then I will have Olivia and Andy join us later to share more about their involvement and experience at SEU. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I'm going to talk about why you should study economics. I'll discuss the economics major requirements and later I'll give you some information on how economics majors a fair on the job market. So why study economics? Economics is a very diverse field. They study trade-offs. Uh, in econ classes, you're gonna talk about decisions on how to use scarce resources. And the critical thinking that you learn in these classes will be extremely valuable beyond the classroom uh, setting. Uh, not only you're gonna learn how these economic decisions are made, but also you're gonna be able to apply the critical thinking to other areas of your life, as well as other topics. Uh, econ subjects are, are very applicable to business. In these classes, you're going to learn about how businesses succeed and fail. You're going to talk about the behavior of firms and consumers in the marketplace. Uh, we talk about international trade and finance uh, that are extremely important for many firms uh, in the economy. In macroeconomic classes, you'll learn more about economic growth, inflation, and unemployment uh, my, and other topics. Uh, my colleagues are accomplished scholars in a variety of fields, fields in economics. They teach classes in micro theory, applied micro, mathematical economics, also in behavioral development and labor economics. Uh, we also have classes in macro, um, both theoretical and applied, 
as well as economic history, uh, money and banking, and international trade and finance. At the CU, economics classes are small, not taught by professors. Professors know students by name, and many students work with professors as teaching assistants and uh, research assistants. Um, students also have opportunities to get involved in the community. Um, we have the Economic Student Association Club. This club organizes events. For example, last fall, they've invited a few Econ alumni to come on campus and share about their job market experiences with our current students. We also have the Civil Society Institute. Olivia has been part of that, so I'm gonna turn it over to Olivia to, to talk about her involvement with the Civil Society Institute. Olivia? Yeah, yeah. so um, the Civil Society Institute is a really cool opportunity for economic students. Um, it's basically a, a weekly meeting, um, and it's an opportunity for economics professors and students to get together and sort of informally discuss really interesting and relevant topics. Um, so, for example, this past week, our meeting, the topic for our meeting was um, the gender gap in um, sort of the different uh, parts of the workforce um, and in also in terms of specifically um, pay and wage, um, so the wage gap. Uh, so lots of different uh, really interesting topics. Students can bring up their own topics and um, lead a discussion if they want. Um, so it's a really good opportunity. Thank you. Indeed. So at SCU, we have two uh, ways for you to uh, get an econ degree. Uh, you can get a Bachelor of Science through the College of Arts and Sciences and a Bachelor of Science in Commerce through the Liffey School of Business. You can also have a minor in economics. There are some uh, small differences uh, between, in terms of requirements between uh, the economic degree to the College of Arts and Sciences and the Liffey School of Business, but students attend the same classes and professors can really tell uh, what major the students are, are, are in. All students, all economics and business students take, uh, should, should take classes, need to take classes uh, in introductory micro, uh, macroeconomics and international economics. And then economics uh, majors have to fulfill other requirements. They have to take two classes in math, one statistics class, and also a data analytics class in lab. They also have to uh, fulfill um, intermediate micro, macro, and intermediate finance or trade requirements. And then they have to choose five elect economic electives for uh, students in the Co College of Arts and Sciences and three economics electives for the business school. Uh, we also have two concentrations. Uh, one is a mathematical concentration where students design their plan of, plan of study by focusing their electives uh, to be more mathematically oriented. That concentration is extremely valuable for students who want to pursue graduate degrees. We also have a data analysis concentration where again students will choose classes where they can apply further the skills they've learned in 41 and 42, the data analysis classes. And this skills, the data analysis skills, skills are extremely valuable on the job market. Uh, when students need to choose their electives, they have a wide range of electives to choose from. Just to mention a few, um, money and banking, economic development, economics of the environment, uh, labor economics, um, economics of poverty and inequality, mathematical economics, uh, advanced mathematical economics classes, advanced data analysis classes, and advanced macroeconomic classes. Let me uh, now talk about how our economics major uh, do on the job market or what, what kind of jobs you can uh, get with an econ degree. Uh, we, uh, we see that economics major can get jobs in a variety of roles. They can work for businesses, they can work for banks, law firms, consulting, thing, consulting, consulting, thing, consulting firms, or they can work in government positions. Uh, according to the pay scale 2019, the median staffing salary for an econ major is 56,700. To give you a flavor of how it ranks uh, compared to other majors, I selected a few majors from the same survey. And here you can see the median early career pay as well as median mid career pay for economics as well as finance, accounting, political science, psychology, and sociology. 
uh, as you can see, uh, econ economics major do uh, very well compared to other the other majors here. Also, economics tends to be very valuable when it's combined with other majors and minors. And again, from the same uh, survey, you can see some of the starting salaries as well as mid-career salaries for uh, for this uh, student for these majors. Our graduates uh, are uh, get jobs in uh, many firms around this area, but also nationwide. Uh, two, three of our recent uh, graduates, Emmy, Michael, and Daniel, they got they obtained jobs at Apple, Dolby Laboratories, and Lockheed Martin, respectively. As I mentioned before, um, in general, economics majors have jobs in firms, banking, um, consultancy firms government positions as well as law firms. When they work for firms, they tend to find themselves in marketing, human resources or management positions, um, and other, other roles in, in the company. Thank you very much for, for listening. And now we'll turn it over to Andy and Olivia to talk more about their involvement at SCU. Uh, in a few minutes, we're also gonna, they're also gonna share with us how they chose their econ degree. Great. Okay. Uh, thanks, Professor. Um, so in terms of some of the organizations on campus that I've been involved in, um, one that comes to mind immediately, I'm a member of the ACE Leadership Program, which is a professional development organization that focuses on preparing networking skills and your personal brand and just general tips and advice uh, that you can carry with you into your career. And that's been really beneficial. For me. Um, another opportunity I got to participate in was study abroad. Um, I went uh, to Europe, to Vienna, Austria during fall quarter of my junior year, and that was a, just an exceptional experience, very transformational, um, wonderful to travel and learn all about the culture as well as do some personal growth. Um, and then another big program that I'm involved in is the Community Fellows Program uh, in the Levy School of Business. And that program places business students in paid internship roles with local governments and nonprofit organizations. And it's just a, a great way to serve your community, make a difference in the area we live in, as well as uh, learn some great skills about working in an office and just general professional skills. Um, in terms of Outside of campus, I like to ski in the winter, a hike around in the summer, and also head up to San Francisco, explore the city, and uh, go to some great restaurants up there. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, I uh, actually, with Andy, I'm actually part of the Community Fellows Program that he mentioned. And my placement um, is at the San Jose Office of Economic Development. Um, I'm doing business outreach, uh, which is especially important right now in these sort of crazy times. So it's, it's really interesting to see how um, the Office of Economic Development is responding. Um, and then outside of that, I've also been involved in peer advising uh, with, within the Levy School of Business. So um, taking on sort of a mentorship role with first year business students and helping them navigate sort of the challenges of transitioning, transitioning to college, and then also sort of figuring out what classes to register for and um, all those sort of things that feel very hectic and chaotic when you're first starting out, um, but quickly become second nature. Um, and then I've also been involved in um, tutoring pretty extensively. So I work as a hub writing tutor. Um, the hub is Santa Clara University's writing center. Um, so I can, I help people out with uh, their essays and their resumes and anything and everything in between for that. Um, and then lastly, um, I'm an, actually this, this year I've taken on the role of being an immersion leader. So um, the Ignatian Center at Santa Clara has immersion opportunities. So week long, um, sort of experiences for students to immerse themselves in a new place in the United States and globally um, into a new culture, a new environment, and really challenge them to, to think in a different way about their own lives and the lives of other people around them. Um, so those are sort of my experiences that I've had at Santa Clara. Thank you very much. So let me ask you, how did you select your major? Yeah, so um, for me, so to be Completely frank, I've changed my major probably five to six times during the past four years. Um, and so, but I always ended up coming back to economics, no matter where I sort of ventured out. Um, and I think the reason for that is, uh, Professor Ardeline, I think you did a great job touching on this. Uh, the 
sort of the broad scope of focus that economics gives you. And it really sort of highlights um, and teaches you a very, um, a very broad analytical uh, way of, of looking at problems and um, finding solutions to them. And, you know, I, I have a lot of different, very diverse interests. And so I wanted to, to pursue a field that gave me um, a leg up and gave me a critical perspective that I could apply to a lot of different fields and a lot of different career paths. And economics was definitely the perfect fit for that. Yes, it's true. I, I agree. It's economics is very versatile. Yeah, definitely. Andy? Yeah, um, for me, I also started as a different major. I was a finance major uh, until about midway through my sophomore year. And then I realized that um, one of the things I wanted to do in my career was hopefully make some sort of an impact on my community. And in terms of what an economics uh, degree can give you for that uh, really resonated with me in terms of going into a career focused on policy, uh, focused on just other government um, and understanding economic theory. Um, that was just a really great fit for me. I have a similar experience with you, Andy. I, I, my degree in a uh, bachelor degree is in finance and then I moved over to uh, economics. So it took me longer than you to decide. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, another question I would like to ask you is what have been your favorite classes in, in economics? And you don't have to say my classes. <laughs> Okay, so unfortunately, I have not had the opportunity to have Professor Arlene um, uh, here during my, my economics classes at Santa Clara. I'm sure, I am positive her classes are wonderful, but um, I can't speak to those, unfortunately. But um, I would say by far, my, my favorite courses have been the electives um, in data analytics and econometrics. So um, the professors that teach those courses um, I'll make the material super approachable, super understandable. You do not need to have any prior experience with programming or coding or econometrics. Um, and they make sure that you can follow along. Um, and also, uh, it's such a cool way of, of making maybe these sort of intangible things very concrete using data and coming up with, with um, real, real life trends. Um, and and the, the sort of the subject matter that you can apply data analytics to is so vast. So I've taken a data analytics course in macroeconomic theory, um, but I've also taken a data analytics course about gender issues in the developing world. So pretty diverse array of topics you can cover. And then lastly, I think those data analytics skills that you learn, um, specifically we, we use R, um, those skills are so marketable um, and they're, they're really helpful when you're entering the job market to be able to say you have proficiency in them. Uh, for me, um, when I think of my favorite courses, uh, a lot of the economics electives um, that I've taken uh, this, over the past year really come to mind. One of them actually I took with Professor Ardeline, uh, International Trade. That was really an excellent class, um, as well as Economics of the Environment and uh, the Economics of Poverty and Inequality in the United States. And I would say what the common theme with all of those that are really interesting to me is they allow uh, us as students to take economic thought and theory and apply it to real world um, pertinent current event issues, whether that's investigating tariff policy or seeing what the effect of a carbon tax would be on the economy. It's just super interesting to be able to apply um, the theory that we've learned in previous classes to things that we can take out into the real world. Thank you. And I'm sure uh, many students will, uh, will like to know more about uh, whether you had any internships or how did you find those internships or how did you go about searching for your job? Uh, yeah, so I um, had a full-time internship last summer with Caltrain. Uh, it's the commuter railroad on the San Francisco Peninsula. I was in a uh, operations planning role with them. And I really found that opportunity through uh, the on-campus career fairs that Santa Clara uh, sponsors. They bring in once a quarter dozens of companies and organizations from all over the Bay Area. And it's just a great opportunity to get to meet and have one-on-one -on -one discussions with recruiters, find out what exactly they're looking for in applicants for the internships and full-time positions that they 
um, have available, as well as get to drop your resume off directly with the people who are hiring in these organizations, which can definitely give you a leg up over just someone applying online. And I can speak a little bit um, to post-college as well. I'm taking a bit more of an unconventional path. I'm doing a gap year and then going on, uh, hopefully in a graduate program to uh, get my master's in urban and regional planning. But the school has been super supportive of that as well and has great resources in the Career Center and the, the business school um, to help people prepare for going on to further education. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, Andy's totally right. The the career, I mean, there's a, a million, it seems like a million career fairs every, every quarter at Santa Clara. So they give you so many opportunities to connect with employers, which is really great. Um, for me, so, so I think the other thing to, to note is that there's also a lot of programs offered through the university to help support students in getting internships um, and pursuing different sort of learning opportunities outside of classes. So one program that I've been involved in is the REAL program, um, which offers stipends and, and sort of grants for student to support students financially in pursuing internship, unpaid internships out of like a whole diverse array of placements. So um, for my sophomore year, I used a REAL stipend to work at the Palo Alto Art Center, um, which is a nonprofit art museum in Palo Alto. Um, and I got a chance there to sort of pursue and, and look into my interests uh, um, at the intersection of art, history, and business. So that was really cool. Um, but other people work at NASA. There's people that um, use that stipend and paint murals around San Jose. Uh, you can do really anything with that. Um, and then sort of speaking to my after, co uh, after college plans, um, so pursuing, um, getting my job um, uh, at Banning Company, um, the resources at Santa Clara were invaluable to making that happen for me. So um, specifically the professors, the mentors, the staff at Santa Clara, um, first of all, they, they connected me with the recruiters at that company, um, but also they continually supported me through the process. So they, they were vital in making sure my resume, my CV were up to par. Um, they were really helpful in supporting me and helping me prepare for the interview process, um, making sure that I put my best foot forward. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Any final thoughts or advice you'd like to share? Hmm. Um, absolutely. So one recommendation that I would have to anyone in their undergraduate career is to definitely, if you have the opportunity to go abroad to seize that, um, whether uh, you can go for a full quarter or semester to study abroad someplace, or even if it's just a couple week long immersion trip. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I went abroad to Vienna and it was just an incredible experience. Um, honestly, this may sound a little cliche, but it was just life changing in the ways that I grew personally, as well as the different uh, opportunities to learn about cultures and just uh, global, uh, the global community. And so I would definitely recommend that. Yeah, I definitely would echo what Andy said. Um, there's so many opportunities to kind of get outside of um, Santa Clara and, and learn about life outside of Santa Clara. And you should definitely seize this if you can. Um, and then I would say sort of to prospective students, um, I think the most important piece of advice I can give you as you're sort of making this decision on where to go um, is think about envision yourself at that at the school you're looking at right so um, think about the community think about the people think about the connections that you would have with that community um, ultimately that's the most important thing that you can have at a school is a, a sense of connection with your peers with your professors with the staff members and um, for me uh, the community at Santa Clara has been like none other. Um, and it was absolutely the right place for me to go to, to find that connection with other people. And hopefully it might be for you as well. Thank you both very much for joining me on this presentation. In closing, I would like to um, add that we aim to create critical thinkers who are innovative, creative, analytical, and conscientious. And uh, 